public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network. A network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. I'm Bart Matthews, your public defender. The case you're about to witness is a true one taken from the files of a public defender's office. A public defender is an attorney employed by your community to give legal aid to any person financially unable to retain counsel. What makes a man steal? What drives a man to commit a crime? The story of Harry Nelson started just a few months ago in Department 88 of the Superior Court at his arraignment. Harry Nelson. Is Harry Nelson your true name? Yes, sir. Is it Harry or Henry? Harry. Would you please speak up so that the court can hear you? Harry. Harry Nelson, information number 46238. You are charged with the crime of grand theft. Mr. Nelson, do you have an attorney? No, sir. Do you have the money to employ an attorney? No, sir. Public defender appointed. We waive for the reading, Your Honor. 28 for plea. You? The court is recessed until 2 o'clock this afternoon. What are we going to do? What's going to happen to us? Easy, Mom. Don't cry. Things are bad enough. Come on, Mom. Let's go. How could he do something to us? How could he do a thing like this to his family? You're wasting your time trying to do anything for me. Well, suppose you sit down and tell me something about it. But there's nothing to say. You're wasting your time. Did you steal the money, Mr. Nelson? Yes. Why? Why does anybody steal? Well, can you give me some of the facts? Well, I told everything to the police when they arrested me. But won't you tell me? I'm your lawyer. But I don't want a lawyer. I have no case. Let me decide that, Mr. Nelson. Now, $2,500 is a lot of money. Where is it now? I spent it. On what? That's my business. I spent it, and I'm guilty. Well, innocent or guilty, I want to do the best for you that I can. But I don't want a lawyer. Take me back to my cell. Despite the fact that Harry Nelson didn't want counsel, it was my responsibility to defend him. His wife and family lived in the south end of town. Every night after supper, he'd leave. Where did he go? We said he was going to take a walk. Well, when did he come home? Late. Most of the time, I'd be sleeping when he got in. Where do you think he really went, Mrs. Nelson? He stole $2,500, didn't he? It must have been for somebody else. Another woman. Are you sure of that? Oh, I'm not sure of anything. But how could he have taken all that money from his own boss, a man that trusted him? Did your husband gamble? Huh? Well, did he buy anything recently? A coat. A coat from Mary. Well, when was this? A few days before he was arrested. How much did it cost? I tried so hard. All I wanted was a nice house, a decent place for Mary to entertain. I hated to see her bring her friends here. Mrs. Nelson, uh, where did he buy the coat? The coat? Oh, it said Lucille's on the box. Are you sure he didn't have any big household bills to pay? I got along on what Harry made, not a penny more. It wasn't easy. Sometimes the children went without things they should have. But we got along. We got along fine. Donald. Sure we did. We had everything we needed. Donald, please, go away. Daddy. Now, did he ever mention any names that were strange to you? 
uh, say that he was going to buy anything expensive. I thought I knew him like a book. I knew the words he was going to say before he said them. He wasn't always the best provider, but at least I thought he was honest. It's not true, Mom. Dad didn't steal anything. They're lying. Dad couldn't steal. Donald, do your homework. I did it already. I want to stay here, Mom. Donald. Oh, all right. Uh, we'll see what we can find out, Mrs. Nelson. Oh, you said your daughter worked at Squire's department store. She was going to school to become a designer. She had to quit to get a job as a stock girl. Doesn't pay very much. Wonder how we're going to get along. I'll be talking to you very soon, Mrs. Nelson. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Miss Nelson. If you spoke to my mother, I can't tell you anything more. I don't know why he did it. Why did he do it? That's what I'd like to know. I'd like to find out how he spent that money. If he could return it, he'd be in a better position. I don't know what he did with it. I understand he bought you a coat a few days before he was arrested. It was my birthday. I checked that coat, Miss Nelson. It cost almost $200. Now, your father didn't make much money. It's mine. You can't take it away from me. Your mother said that he took walks at night. That's what he said. Who was he seeing? How should I know? I wasn't with him. Now, Miss Nelson, your father's in jail. Is there anything you can tell me that might help his defense? That coat was the nicest present he ever gave me. Thank you, Miss Nelson. Mr. Harding, the man Harry Nelson worked for, ran a printing establishment in the downtown area. A busy little shop. Prosperous, too. Oh, I can't understand it. I can't tell you how shocked I was when that accountant checked the books and told me. Why, Harry Nelson was with me for 18 years, ever since I started here. He was a pretty dependable employee, wasn't he, Mr. Harding? I thought so. Pardon me, will you sign this, Mr. Harding? Oh, yes. Uh, wait a minute, I, I... I better look at this. I signed that check for Nelson the same way. I think I better know what I'm signing from now on, huh? And that's the letter you dictated to the wholesale house. Oh, well, that can't cost me any money. As a matter of fact, I might make a buck on this. They've been charging me too much for paper. I'm sorry about Mr. Nelson. He's a nice man. There you are, Miss. Mr. Harding, why is it after working for you all these years, Nelson was still a bookkeeper at $75 a week? Well, that's all he was worth. And he didn't have enough get up and go. No, no initiative. Well, I thought of making him head bookkeeper lots of times, but. No, Nelson just didn't have it, that's all. Hmm. 2,500 bucks. When he started taking, he sure didn't spare me, did he? Well, I guess I trusted him too much. He vindicated that trust for 18 years, didn't he? Yeah, sure. But look what it cost me in the long run. This company was Nelson's bread and butter. Why, he raised his family on what I paid him. <laughs> look at the thanks I got. This is Nelson's first offense. I think he deserves every break he can get. Look, Mr. Matthews... I know you're his lawyer, and well, you're trying to do what's best for him. But I figure when a man does what Nelson did, well, he deserves to go to jail. Supposing I were able to locate and return that money, would you consider a program of probation? Well, in that case, uh, I might. After all, I'd have my money back. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Harding. I'll see what I can do. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Matthews. $75. Well, what for? I was listening. I know that you're looking for the money that Mr. Nelson took. This is part of it. I don't understand. I needed money badly a few weeks ago. I didn't know where to turn. Mr. Nelson loaned me $150. Oh, I see. I knew Mr. Nelson didn't have very much. 
I had no idea that he'd stolen anything. It was just that I had to have it. Thank you very much for the money. I appreciate you telling me about it. I'll bring the rest of your office in the next day or two. Try to help him, Mr. Matt, please. It was a strange case. A stubborn, angry client. A bitter, unhappy family. A fellow employee to whom he loaned $150 of stolen money. Mr. Matthews. Mrs. Nelson, come in. What's the matter? Everything. You've got to help us. <laughs> when did he leave this? I don't know. Late this afternoon, I think. Nobody in the neighborhood has seen him since. What are we going to do? Have you notified the police? Who can I turn to? My family's breaking apart. Help me. Captain Billings, please. Oh, that's right. Hello? Uh, Captain, this is Bart Matthews. I want to report a missing boy. Donald Nelson. Age 16, uh, rather small for his age. Uh, brown hair, dark eyes. Oh, that's right, he ran away from home sometime this afternoon. It was late that night before the highway patrol found Donald Nelson. He was taken into custody about 80 miles north of Los Angeles on the Inland Road. Oh, Mr. Matthews, is that the way you're looking for? Yeah, thanks. I'll take care of him now. Hello, Donald. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go home. Your mother is quite worried about you, son. Let me go, Mr. Matthews. I'll be back after a while. Where were you heading? Up north. Kind of a bad time to be leaving your folks, isn't it? I couldn't stay, Mr. Matthews. The way Mom's talking about Dad, he's a great guy. Sure. I know how you feel. And what did you do? Forget the duck? Well, some kids at school made some wisecracks. They look at me as if my father was a gangster. Running away doesn't help things, Don. What were you going to do? Go to work. At what? Fruit picking anything. I'll pay Mr. Harding back. Every penny. They'll let him go then, won't they, Mr. Matthews? Won't they? He was riding this, Mr. Matthews. Think you can get in the trunk of your car? Yeah, I think we can manage it. Hey, that's a good-looking scooter you got there. Where did you get it? My dad. My dad got it for me. Oh, really? When? A couple of weeks ago. It was really for my birthday next month. But my dad said he couldn't wait. He wanted me to have it. Must have cost a lot of money. You bet. It's brand new. My dad wouldn't buy no second-hand job. Can I see the registration? Oh, sure, Mr. Matthews. And I got the pink slip, too. That means it's mine. My dad paid cash for it. He doesn't like to buy things on... Do you think he bought it with that money that... Would it help him if you give it back? I think so, Donald. In more ways than one. Gee, it was a swell scooter. But these are the facts, Mr. Nelson. You took the money on February the 14th. On the 15th, you bought the code for Mary. On the 16th, you got a scooter for Donald. On the same day, you gave Mrs. Berry $150. All right, I did. Now, that accounts for about $500. What did you do with the rest of the money, Harry? I spent it. I told you I spent it. Your case comes up tomorrow morning. How can I help you? You've given me nothing to go on. But I told you I didn't want a lawyer. I don't want one now. Why don't you leave me alone? What did you do with the money? Why did you take those presents away from the kids? They deserved them. They've never had good things before. You can't buy good things with stolen money. Now, what did you do with the rest of it? If I plead you guilty, you get one to ten years. 
Don't you realize what this would do to your family? How do you suppose they feel about you going to jail? Happy, proud? My family wouldn't care if I rotted in jail. But they do, Mr. Nelson. They want you home. I know my family. I've lived with them long enough to know them. I've worked and slaved half my life supporting them. Do you want to know what happened that night before I took the money? Go ahead, Harry. I'd like to hear it. I got home late that night. Mr. Harding asked me to check something in the books. Why, Amy never even waited for me for dinner. couple of things I had to do down at the office. See, I got my report card. Yeah. Say, that's pretty good. Two A's. That's fine work, Donald. Yeah, but I think I got chipped in math. How are you doing in designing school? I'm doing all right. We owe tuition again. Oh. Okay. I'll find it someplace. Well, this is a fine time to be getting home. I had to work overtime. Overtime? That's the second time this week. You shouldn't, not unless Mr. Harding pays you more money. Please, I'd like to enjoy my dinner. I'll see you later. Sure, son. Say, <clears throat> they were really fine marks he got. Harry, Mary hasn't heard from Jack in almost a week. Mm, that's too bad. They have a little quarrel or something? No, we, we didn't quarrel. He just hasn't called, not once. What's the matter with her? Did I say something wrong? Harry, you're blind. Positively blind. I don't know what you're talking about. They were getting along fine. Mary even thought he was going to propose until she brought him over here that night. Uh, Harry, we've just got to move out of this place. Look at it, broken down. It's too old to make anything decent out of it. The neighborhood was bad enough when we moved here, and now it's impossible. Amy. I would like to live in a better place, too. But we can't afford it. Ask Mr. Harding for a raise. I can't. I'm just a bookkeeper. And he's paying me the same as he would any other bookkeeper. You're not any other bookkeeper. You've been with him since he started. Our children deserve a better home. Please listen to Mom. Dad, I'm ashamed to bring anybody here. Mom and I saw the cutest little house, three bedrooms, everything we could possibly want. It's beautiful, Harry, and we could furnish it reasonably on time. It's a wonderful neighborhood, and Mary would be so proud to... Amy, houses and furniture cost money we haven't got. You haven't eaten your dinner. I'm not hungry. Where are you going? I'm going to take a walk. Harry, you're always going to take a walk. Now, let's discuss this. Let's come to a decision now. Please, Harry. Amy, I don't want to talk about it. We can't pay our bills as it is. How can we afford a house? Other people own their own houses. Why can't we? That's not the way to talk to your father. Now, you go to bed and we'll discuss it in the morning. Amy, there's nothing to discuss. We can't do it, and that's all. But we can. I've got it all figured out. Now, the down payment on the house will be $2,000. $2,000. And tomorrow afternoon, after work, you and I can go to the finance company. You know the nice people you got the money from before. And we'll just borrow some more. I am not going into debt for that finance company again. But, Harry, think what we'll be doing. We'll be giving our children a real home. A real, real home. But, Amy, this is all we can afford. I'm getting too old to worry about new bills. We have enough now. I can't go further into debt. But, Harry, it isn't really a debt. It's an obligation. My father always told me that a man without obligations wasn't worth his salt. Please, Harry. All right, Amy. I'll find a way. I'll find a way. about that on my way to the office the next day. I kept thinking about all the things they wanted that I couldn't give them. Well, I was writing out checks, 
for Mr. Harding in the office. And I didn't, I didn't think it was stealing. It felt more like borrowing. I was going to pay it back a little, a little each week. I know I was stupid. But I wanted them to be happy. You've had it pretty rough. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Matthews. A lot of men would have just run away. But I couldn't. There was Donald. I let him down, too. What did you do with the rest of the money, Harry? The other $2,000? It's an escrow, Mr. Matthews. Down payment on the house that Amy and Mary wanted. Nelson, 46328. At this time, Your Honor, we ask leave to withdraw our plea of not guilty heretofore entered for the purpose of entering a new and different plea. Harry Nelson pleads guilty as charged. Is there any legal cause why sentence should not now be pronounced? No legal cause, Your Honor. If it please the court, I would like to make a statement in Mr. Nelson's behalf. Proceed. Harry Nelson made a mistake, and he regrets it with all his heart. He admits that he stole $2,500. $2,400 has already been returned. Now, Your Honor, I do not condone this crime, but I believe that you should understand why he committed it. Now, how did he spend this money? On himself? No. He bought a coat for his daughter so that she could face her friends without shame. He made a down payment on a house so that his wife could hold her head up high when she had friends in. He bought a scooter for his son so that he could be a leader in his set. Of these things he could not afford, Your Honor. He was driven beyond his limitations by his family. A family that could not find happiness in the things that he could provide for them on a bookkeeper's salary. Now, in view of the extenuating circumstances, Your Honor, I feel that justice can best be served by granting this man probation. Any comment? No objections, Your Honor. The defendant will please stand. It's the judgment of the law and the sentence of this court that you, Harry Nelson, be committed to the state prison for the term prescribed by law. However, due to the extenuating circumstances just described by Mr. Matthews, the sentence is suspended and you're placed on probation for a period of three years under the condition that you obey all of the rules set down by the probation department. Court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. You're free to go now, Harry. Gee, Dad, it's wonderful. Come on, Dad. Come here, let's go home. Nelson is still keeping books. Mr. Harding gave him his job back. Mary is working now and doing quite well. And Amy? Well, Amy is satisfied with what she's got. And she ought to be. I think Harry Nelson is a good man. Tonight's case was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender.